So discontinuities, we've talked about things that are discontinuous back in really algebra one, algebra two, for sure, pre-calc. Um, each of these graphs are discontinuous, but we've got two different types that AP is going to care about. They're talking about a removable discontinuity versus non-removable. And I'm just going to have you note a removable discontinuity. That just means we have a hole. So if I were to say this line's continuous, if I remove one part of it, if I remove one little part, is it now discontinuous because it has a hole? Yeah, so that's how I remember, like, removable, boop, I can just remove one little dot, and it's now discontinuous. Or I can plug that back in, and it's continuous. So which of these four graphs would you say is removable, i.e. just a hole? A, B, C, or D? Lob? D. You say, no, there's the hole. If I were you, I would go ahead and say, all right, that means that these three, these are called non-removable discontinuity. And how I remember that these are non-removable, even if I were to plug in this point, even if I were to go like this and fill in that hole, is this still discontinuous? Meaning would I still have to lift up my lightsaber to keep drawing it? Yeah. So anything that is more than just a simple hole within a function, it's going to be non-removable. These do have three different names. What do you think this type of discontinuity is going to be if both my fingers are going up towards infinity? infinity. So this is called infinite discontinuity. So infinite discontinuity. And then both of these are the same. Oh yeah, we talked about this last year, didn't we? Yeah, does my lightsaber literally have to jump to hop up to the next part? Yep. So these are both called jump discontinuity. Boop. Okie doke, let's see this next one. It says, all right, which one of these, it says the limit as X approaches five, the limit exists. Which one would you wanna say, A, B, C, or D? D. Yeah, the limit exists. The other limits do not exist. They're going to infinity or they're equaling different values from both sides. Love it. Question number three says the limit from the left and the limit from the right and the value of the function at five are distinctly different numbers. B, you're saying. You're saying the limit from the left is something. The limit from the right is something else. And the value of the function when f is five, boop, is something else. I dig it. Good call, Lob. I think this gets a little harder when it's just words. Ooh, and when we don't have a calculator either. Woof, this is some good reminders. Here's this function, you don't have a calculator, which is true. So we're gonna remind ourselves what makes a vertical discontinuity, what makes a removable, meaning a whole. What could we do to help us figure this out? We don't have anything to plug in. Could I factor anything out? What can we factor? An X out of the... Couldn't we go bigger in the top? What else can we factor out of the top? Yeah, let's take out an x squared out of the top. What will be left? 3x plus 2. 3x plus 2. What about on the bottom? Hitting all sorts of buttons. So on the bottom, we're taking out an x. Okay. So what does that mean? Does anyone remember this goes back to pre-calc stuff? Where do we have a hole? A hole is when you've got a common factor in the numerator and denominator. So... Do you agree that the top and the bottom both have an X? Mm -hmm. So you got to say, where does that common factor, which was X, equal zero? <laughs> and you agree, uh, if I were to just write that out, okay, X is zero. We've got a hole at X is zero. And a hole is what type of discontinuity? Removable, boop, or non-removable? No, removable. removable. Hi, Miss Meister. So if we've got that hole, you guys, that means that we can get rid of that. This cancels out. The hole, if I were to cancel it out, is now gone. Then does anyone remember what this would lead us to, that x minus 1 on the bottom? It, it would be a 0 at x equals 4. What's going to be at, at x is 1? We're going to have a... Yeah, vertical asymptote. So a vertical asymptote, you guys, a VA, is when the denominator equals 0. 
And as Cooper said, when does x minus 1 equal 0? That's going to happen at x equals 1. So these are good little reminders for yourself. Be like, oh, yeah, we did that, but that was a while ago. Whole is that common factor. Vertical asymptotes are where whatever is left equals 0 in the denominator. Okay, so would you say if we've got a whole at 0 and a vertical asymptote at 1, I have no idea what my graph is looking like, but I do know it's got a hole somewhere when x is zero, and it also has a vertical asymptote. So I'm just making this up, but my graph could be something like this. A hole at zero and a vertical asymptote at one. Would that graph be continuous? No. Continuous means I never have to lift up my pencil. This is definitely discontinuous, right? So it says it has a discontinuity due to a vertical asymptote at x is zero. Do we have a vertical asymptote at x is zero? Nah, you have a hole there. Removable discontinuity at x is 0 and a jump discontinuity at 1. Well, let's talk about it. What kind of discontinuity is at x is 1 if I've got a vertical asymptote? Infinite discontinuity, okay? If we're ever going to a vertical asymptote, it'll be infinitely low, infinitely high, or just does not exist. So I'm not digging B. Mm -mm. We don't have jump discontinuity. We got infinite. Um, oh, this is not convenient. Does yours just say at x equals? Yes. That's not convenient at all. At, it's supposed to say 1. Boop. Is that true or false? Yeah, it's true. Oh, you're digging C, the one with the right answer I typed wrong? F is continuous at 0. That's our beef, right? We've got a hole there, so it's not continuous. So, oh, my God. The graph is shown below then all they're asking here is if we know what this word means. Which one has removable discontinuity? Remove. It's just a point. Which point? When x is what, 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 what? We got spirit. Removable. Where's my hole? At one, we got a hole. Where else do we have just a hole? Mm-mm. Five. We have non-removable because we've got jump discontinuity. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Seven's the other hole. So only one and seven. I know, right? And maybe you write yourself a note because a lot of people do this. You guys maybe just say, this one is jump discontinuity. And jump discontinuity is not removable. Might be a weird question, but why isn't it? Okay, you guys. Number six. Here's this crazy function. Whoa. Oh, we do get a calculator. You're welcome. Go ahead and grab your calc key, guys. What do we got going on at 2 and negative 1? At negative 1, do you agree on your graph? At, what do you think that x value is? At negative 1, there's a hole. And you might be like, uh, why wouldn't my calculator show that to me earlier? Here's why. Your calculator with pixelation is called rounding uh, rounding average, they do, they, um, each pixel is say 0.1. So if you graph that without, without zoom forward, you're not seeing the whole. And it's only because about the X values that your calculator uses to plug in to find out to graph this. So this can be unhelpful sometimes. Zoom four will show you the, the holes. Um, and so knowing that, Zoom four, zoom decimal. What can we say about this question? It says, hey, which of the following is true at two and negative one? What's going on at two, would you say? Yeah, we got a vertical asymptote, I agree. So, do we have a jump discontinuity at two? Jump discontinuity. Nope, it's infinite, so I'm not digging the word jump. Do we have a jump discontinuity at two again? No, we disagree. Do we have a discontinuity due to a vertical asymptote at 2? Yep. Is it continuous at negative 1? No. no, it's not continuous. Discontinuous, removable. Um, vertical asymptote and removable at negative 1. Okay, let's put this together a smidge. So it says, hey, my function is continuous at a point if and only if. We got three different scenarios here, and I kind of want to draw them all. So... F of C, actually, I'm going to build something. You guys can wait to draw it if you want. 
Do you agree f of c is defined? You don't even, you could draw this part if you want, but you don't have to. If f of c is defined, does this graph have f of c is defined? You agree? But is this continuous? No. So f of c is defined, but it's not continuous here. This one says the limit exists. So let's think about this real fast. For the limit to exist, does this limit exist as x approaches c? Yes. Yeah. Is it continuous? No. no, it's got a hole. It's got a removable discontinuity. So for something to be continuous, not only does the limit have to exist, but it has to equal the value of the function. So how would I draw that there? I'd say, oh, okay, my not only does my limit have to exist at c, but also that limit has to equal the value of the function at c. So what am I going to do to that point right there? I'm going to fill it in. That means something's continuous. So let's go draw ourselves like off to the side. I saved you that space. I'm going to say, all right, I got this big old graph. I got this nice function. Your function can look like anything you want. And this is C. And we're going to say, all right, we're going to say it is continuous. Continuous at X is C because the limit as x approaches c of my function that I'll name f of x off to the side equals the value of the function at f of c. And for that to be true, I gotta color in that dot. It says, oh, draw three examples where a function is discontinuous because this one first says, hey, the limit exists, but the value of the function does not. What would that be? How would we, putting words into a picture I think is really hard. The limit exists. Right. So if the limit exists, my fingers have to come together, but the value of the function doesn't. So this one's just empty. So we're going to say, okay, limit exists at X is C, but the value of the function does not. And maybe you just write, remind yourself, that just means there's a hole. The limit of my function does not exist. The limit does not exist. So from the left and the right, yes, he says jump. My fingers can't come together. Or could I have done infinite? Yeah. So we could say this is a picture of my limit doesn't exist to C. Or we could have done that. Either one of those. Are these graphs, oops, are these graphs that we just grew, drew discontinuous? These ones right here. Yes. Yeah. It says draw three examples of discontinuous graphs. Those are discontinuous. So is that one. What about this one? It says the limit exists and the value of the function exists, but it has to be discontinuous. The limit has to exist. The value of the function has to exist. There's a, there's a, like a hole a point above it. Exactly, or below it, right? He's like, all right, there's a hole, but then that hole does need to be filled either above it, he said, could be below it. Regardless, that point has to be filled because the limit has to exist and the value of the function has to exist. For me as a student, these were hard. Putting words into a graph or words into an equation, that was hard for me. Okay, let's keep cranking. What happens when I don't give you the picture? What happens when we get the words? It says, hey, let the function be defined. It's got to be defined for every x value. For which value of k is it continuous at x is 3? Because it's saying x doesn't equal 3 at this one point. And at when x is 3, what does it have to equal? Well, for something to be continuous, as we approach 3 from both sides, it doesn't have to equal the value. So what do you think we should do with these two equations? If they have to, if they have to, what's the y value for this graph and that graph? It's the same, right? So what do I have to do between this graph and this graph? Set them equal to each other. You got it. Let's do it. So we're going to say, all right, when does x squared minus 9 over x squared minus 3x equal that k? And you're like, okay, that's a lot of x's. What can I put in? Where's the one point that they care about? When x is? Yeah, when x is 3. That was not ideal that I had that typed that way. So you guys just go through, plug in a 3 for your x, and then that'll allow us to solve for k. Uh-oh, that's not coming out well. What am I getting? 
zero over zero. But Cooper, you had said something earlier. Could I factor that out? Yes. Yeah, to be what? Uh, x minus three e times x plus three mm -hmm. e over x times x minus three. Yes, sir. Does something cancel out nicely? Yeah, the x minus three. Yeah, boom. We just got rid of the whole. We just got rid of the whole. So now we're left with x plus 3 over x equals k. Are we still evaluating when x is 3? You know it. Go plug that 3 in now. What are we going to get on top? Over, yep, 6 over 3 is going to get me 2. And that's my k value. If k was 2, this hole right here will be plugged in by 2. Okie dokie, this will be good, um, yeah, good math practice. Here's a function. What makes my function continuous when x is zero? You guys, every single time for something to be continuous, as we approach from both sides in the value of the function, have to be equal. Every single time, we're going to just go ahead and say, all right, this has to be equal to the bottom function. That bottom function is not always just going to be k. But if they're curious about it being continuous when x is zero, what are we going to get? Want to plug that in? Zero over zero. So what could we multiply this by to help us? The conjugate. What's the conjugate of the top? Plus root seven. You got it, bud. So it's always whatever we've got with those square roots and then the opposite sign in between. If we multiply by that over itself, it's really just by multiplying by one. What's that going to look like when I distribute that top? So, oh, seven. yep, whatever's, exactly, time, the root times the root will just get me what was under that root, 7 minus 2x, and then Rich is like, I'm not even going to write it, because that's going to get me minus some big old root, and then this is going to get me plus some big old root. So, whenever we've got conjugates, I don't have to deal with those inners, the outer and the inner, if you will. What about this last terms, positive root 7 times negative root 7? Minus 7. Minus 7 over... I'm not going to distribute this out on the bottom. I'm going to say I've got an x parenthesis root 7 minus 2x plus root 7 equals k. These 7s cancel? Anything else cancel? Yeah, thanks, Beck. This x with that x. Boom. And I'm left with negative 2 on top and then a root 7 minus 2x plus a root 7. That equals k. They want to know what value of k is going to make this continuous when x is 0. When x is 0, boop, go plug that in right there. When x is 0, we got negative 2 over root 7 plus root 7. Root 7 plus root 7. What's 1 root 7 plus 1 root 7? two root sevens and we're left with negative two over two root seven two's, two's cancel negative one over root seven is that my final answer a <clears throat> oh this one's kind of good which i other than i hate these questions which one's false woof okay so if something is continuous when x is one notice that we got one here here and here so this is approaching one from the left, this is at one, and this is approaching one from the right. For it to be continuous as I approach from the left and the right and at it, doesn't it all have to equal the same? Yeah. So when x approaches one here, what would we get when x approaches one? Two times one plus three. Two times one plus three, five. What about when x is one? Five. What about when x is one? Uh, down here. Yeah, negative 4 times 1 plus 9 is also 5. Would we say it is continuous at 1? Yeah, because from the left and the right. So this one is true. They asked which one is false. As we are looking at 2, which equation would we be able to look at? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. If we're just looking around 2. Yeah, that third one. I'm approaching 2 from the left and the right and at 2 within that interval, correct? What happens when I plug in a 2 there? 2 there, negative 8 plus 9 is 1. 
If I go a little to the left of two, like 1.9 and at 2.1, will that still be continuous? Yeah, so I think this one's true too. At three, notice three is here, here, and here. When I plug in a three to this top one, negative 12 plus nine would get me, is that gonna get me negative three? Is that right? That's gonna get me negative three. Uh, where do I want to say that? Boop, I'll put that off to the side. What about at three? It it's going to get me four. And then bigger than three, three minus six, negative three. And it says it's continuous there. Well, from the left and the right, they're both going to negative three. But what's the value at three? Four. Four. We have a whole. Continuous or not? Nah. So I'm going to say that is false. That would be a whole. Is my function continuous when x is 4? Yeah, anything beyond 3 is going to be nice and continuous because there are no breaks. So I'm saying C is false. Any errors that we see in this? A student attempted to confirm that this crazy function is continuous. Where does an er error occur? Did they factor that top right? Does that multiply to be a positive 4, add to be a negative 5? Yes. Okay, what about the bottom one? Multiply to be an 8, add to be a negative 6? Right? Yeah. I think that they're good. Step two, do they cross off that hole and they were left with x minus 1 over x minus 2? What happens when I plug that 4 in? Yeah, so they're still good? Um, f of 4. f of 4. You guys, f of 4 means that you got to go back to that original function. So I wouldn't plug it into the, when we got rid of the whole, the original function, I'd have to say 4 squared minus 5 times 4 plus 4 over 4 squared minus 6 times 4 plus 8. So you messed up at step 3. Well, did we? What's the answer going to be? Because could it still be 3 halves? Let's see. What's 16 minus 20? Exactly. He's saying, oh, wait, I would have gotten 0 on the top. 16 minus 24 is negative 8 plus 8, I would have gotten 0 over 0 and not 3 halves. So you got lucky, Coop, but it is step 3. This last one said, hey, my function is continuous at x is negative 3. Use correct notation to justify. Yay or nay, continuous at negative 3. What kind of discontinuity do we have? We got a whole, right? So we're going to say... Um, f is discontinuous at x is negative 3, and we got to say because y. True, they're going to want limit notation. What's going on here? Does the, what's the limit as x approaches negative 3 here? Yeah, and does that limit equal the value of the function? And we're going to say no, it does not. And maybe underneath you're saying negative 1 does not equal 2. This came from the limit was negative 1, but the value of the function was 2. This, Bob, is what they want.